Hi, I'm Anne. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 100 classics. Disclaimer before we start. This is a video that's kind of impossible to make perfectly just because it is impossible to read every classic out there for one person. It's just not possible. So this is a highly subjective list. It has to be. I have read a lot of classics, but I'm also only in my 20s currently. So this list, if I made it 10 years from now, may be totally different. So this list is subjective on just my top favorite classic books. And these are in no order. So we're not going from like best to worst or anything like that. Since I don't want to make this video too long, I'm not going to talk that much in depth about each book. I'm just going to mention in vague terms of what it's about and what value I see in reading it. So let's get into it. The first one, Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls. This tells the story of a young boy who finds and befriends these two dogs. It is a tearjerker, but it's one of the best uh, boy-dog friendships I've ever read. I read it when I was in either middle school or elementary school. Next one, The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. So this, of course, tells the story of the three musketeers who um, defend France against bad guys. <laughs> Basically, that's the story. <laughs> it's an exceptional French novel. Uh, the next book is called Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft. It's very hard to pick like one Lovecraft book, especially since he wrote mostly short stories as opposed to books. Um, but in general, I think Call of Cthulhu is his most classic. It's also a rather good one to start with. Next one is Arabian Nights. Uh, this is not a complete volume of Arabian Nights, but it is one of the most beautiful editions I've ever seen of this book. Basically, it's about Scheherazade and how she is going to die if she doesn't tell this uh, sultan a story every single night and keeps him entranced so he won't kill her the next morning. It's and it's where a lot of the classic stories like Sinbad the Sailor, uh, the Genie in the Lamp, Aladdin, all those stories come from Arabian Nights. Next one is oh, Shakespeare. It was tough to pick out just one Shakespeare because I should have said this at the beginning of the video. I'm only going to limit this list to one book per author and because if I didn't, like Shakespeare, for example, would take up at least 10 spots. So I decided after thinking, um, even though there's so many of his I do love, and I love his comedies most of all, I think his best play in general is Hamlet. It's definitely not his most successful play, but Hamlet is, I think, his best, well, most well-written play. Tells about this guy, this prince of Denmark who sees his father's ghost and has to find revenge for his father's murder, basically. All right, <clears throat> next one we got Sherlock Holmes. In this one, I'm gonna go with The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur Conan Doyle. The Hound of the Baskervilles was my first book. I think it's a full novel, maybe it's a novella that features Sherlock Holmes. And I think it's his best story. It's got a haunting atmosphere. It's set on the moors of England. It's not set in London like quite a few of his stories are. It's a great, great book. Next one is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Wilkie Collins is considered to have created the detective genre with his book The Moonstone, but this one is a great mystery about these two girls that look similar and there's a mystery around them. Next one is Crime and Punishment by Fedor Dostoevsky. I have heard that this may not be his best book, that the Brothers Karamazov or like The Idiot or other ones are his better books, but I personally, this one is my favorite. I haven't read all his books yet, so we'll, we'll see. Maybe I'll get a new favorite eventually, but this is a brilliant book about a murderer, and we follow the murderer's perspective as he slowly becomes consumed by guilt. <clears throat> Next one is Cry the Beloved Country by Alan Patton. This talks about uh, South Africa in the 1930s or 40s, around during the apartheid, and it is follows this tale of this black minister who tries to search for his son in Johannesburg only to find out that his son is accused of murder and about to be executed. It's a touching, moving story. Not only is it interesting because of the setting, but also because of the characters. Brilliantly written book. Next one is The Secret of the Old Clock by Caroline Keene. I loved Nancy Drew when I was growing up, and this is the first book. This is the book that introduced the world to Nancy Drew. And yes, if you didn't read it as a child or like 
equivalent books to it, like the Hardy Boys or the Three Investigators or something like that, you definitely missed out because this is a great series and those types of series are just so great. Next one is The Bitter Tea of General Yen by Grace Zaring Stone, which nobody has heard of but me, but I still love it and I still talk about it a lot because it's an exceptional book about this woman who goes to China in the 1920s and 30s and meets this General Yen who's very traditional uh, in a world where nationalism and communism is fighting and he is more of the traditional uh, type aristocracy. Uh, it's fascinating, exceptional book. Highly recommend it. Next is An Old Fashioned Girl by Louisa May Alcott. Now, most people know Alcott through her Little Women book, but I personally like this one better. Um, it tells the story about this young woman who is old fashioned. And even though being old fashioned in the 1900s, uh, you know, early 1900s was totally different than being old fashioned now, but uh, I just, I related to her a lot because I am old fashioned in so many different ways. Next one is The Prince by Nicola Machiavelli. Uh, the Prince is a how to gain power. An exceptional book, but boy, is it depressing. The next one is The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. I have read a few of Erm Ernest Hemingway's book. Uh, I think I have somewhere for whom the bell tolls. That is a great book too. Um, but this one just is near and dear to my house and heart because I was forced to read this in high school and I hated it at the time. But now looking back, I realize just how interesting it is because it is written in the vernacular of the fishermen of that time, which makes it seem like not grammatically correct most of the time, but it is intriguing to see that type of writing. And also just the themes discussed in this book are great. The next one is Kokoro by Natsuma Soseki, which discusses the changing times in Japan. It follows these two men, young, one is a young man, a university student um, that lives in a much more modern capitalist society. And then it goes back to uh, right after the fall of the samurai system in the mid 1800s, uh, where you had the samurai holding all the power and you had uh, lords, daimyo, and a very feudal system. So you see that immense change in society between a more modernized Japanese system, which we see in World War II, uh, from the more traditional feudal system less than 100 years back. So very fascinating book. Next one, I'm not, I'm not going to try to pronounce this. Um, Rubayat um, of Omar Khayyam. Forgive me if I completely butchered his name, but Omar was a poet in the 14, 15th century. I highly recommend his poetry. I have found this book and I'm so happy to find it. The Man for All Seasons by Robert Bolt. This is a play that came out in the 50s or 60s. It tells the story of Sir Thomas More and Henry VIII and their conflict. It talks about the last period of Thomas More's life as he stood up against Henry VIII marrying Anne Boleyn and divorcing Catherine of Aragon. A brilliant play. They made a movie in the 60s about it. That's a great movie too. Next one is The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. It was very hard for me to pick one C.S. Lewis book because again, there could be 10 to 20 on this list featured and it's hard to narrow it down to one. But I think Screwtape Letters was the one that really gave me a love of C.S. Lewis's writing outside of the Chronicles of Narnia, children's books. And there's nothing wrong with reading children's books. However, there is a depth in his adult writing that isn't there in the Chronicles of Narnia. So I, I love this book. It tells of letters between a demon and his uncle as they try to uh, capture the soul of this human man. It is a brilliant book. Next one is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, this tells of the South and the North divide in England in the mid 1800s. It, it follows Margaret Hale who travels up from the country south up to the north industrial factory town and she has to survive there and she meets and falls in love but it is much more a social comedy commentary of the 
uh, social effects of poverty and things like that. It's a brilliant book. I highly recommend it. Next one is the Tintin series in general. Can I do a series? Does it count? I'm not sure. This was a comic book series that came out starting in the I'm th gonna think 40s, but maybe it was 30s. I'm not sure, but it follows Tintin, this young man, and his dog Snowy. Can't remember his dog's name in French, the original language it was written in. It does not exactly hold up when it comes to some politically correct things, but it's a lot of fun. Next one is The Ballad of the White Horse by G.K. Chesterton. Um, again, G.K. Chesterton is an author that I could have quite a few on this list. So for example, The Man Who Was Thursday is a brilliant book, but I think this one is honestly his best book. So if you've read the Iliad or the Odyssey, um, you'll know that is written almost in epic poem. Uh, Beowulf is, is another example. Actually, we'll get to those later down on the list. Um, but basically, J.K. Chesterton was a 20th century writer who decided to write about the invasion of England and the defense by King Alfred the Great in the 400s, 800s. Um, he defended against the Danes in 800s, and this is an epic poem written about that defense. It is a brilliant, beautiful narrative. The next one is, you know, I had to include it, Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. And I'm going to include all of Lord of the Rings because the three tr books of the trilogy were originally supposed to be published in one big book, which is the copy I have here. Um, so I'm going to count it as one book. Uh, it is one of the most renowned fantasy books. It is filled with an incredible world and maybe it's slow to start off with, but boy, does this book get amazing in the second and third books. All right, the next one is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Again, I really struggled to pick out just one by Agatha Christie because I think I like this equally to um, Murder on the Nile and The Mysterious Affair at Styles. There's so many great ones that Agatha Christie wrote, but I'm going to go with this one because I think it is one of the easiest to get into Agatha Christie's writing because it is a standalone. It does follow these characters that are so much more creepy and suspicious than a lot of her other books, and it has such an epic ending as well. So I personally would recommend this as one of the first books to read by Agatha Christie. Next one is The Prince and the Pauper by Mark Twain. I read this in high school and it follows the two boys. One is a prince and one is a pauper who exchange uh, lives for a while. Next one is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. I feel like it's difficult to pick one book by Ray Bradbury because he is so amazing, but Fahrenheit 451 I think is the one that has had the most impact of all his books on society. And that's why I picked it. It follows this world and this man who is a firefighter and his whole point, his whole job is to burn books. And I think that is something that is relevant to the modern era where we do say, oh, maybe this book isn't good or it shouldn't be read because it has something bad in it. So we should ban it. I'm totally against book banning, but this book is brilliant. Next one, Dirty Rising by Kara Kurtz. This is a fantasy from the 70s, I believe it came out in. And it follows this young boy who is becoming king and as well as his protector, this older man who is his mentor. It's a brilliant book. I never enjoyed the rest of the series, but this book is just incredible. The next one is George Orwell's 1984. Again, I went between this and Animal Farm because I think I like Animal Farm better, but I also think this is a more interesting book because the world he created has, again, been so impactful to society. A really brilliant book about a dystopian world, a harsh world where you are being watched all the time and the government has complete control. And it's it's very creepy, very depressing. Next one is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This follows a governor's, governess who goes to take care of a young girl only to uh, be drawn to her mysterious employer. It's a gothic romance, but it is so much more. Jane Eyre is one of the most brilliant characters in literature. She does 
She does not give up her convictions and despite all the abuse and such a harsh life she's been through, she's such an amazing person and such an interesting character. I Even if this book had nothing but Jane Eyre going through life, I would read it even if like Rochester wasn't in there. Love Jane so much. The next one is The Robe by Lloyd C. Douglas. It goes back all the way to the time of Jesus, to the early church, and it documents this young man who uh, got the robe that Jesus wore before he was crucified. It's obviously a fictional book. <laughs> um, that goes without saying, but it is brilliantly written. The understanding of the era of the early Roman Empire is just incredible. The way social structures work, the way um, political and the characters are absolutely brilliant. Next one is Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. Um, my copy of this is slightly falling apart. Whoops. Um, but this tells of this horrible human being in the Civil War. <laughs> I'm sorry, Scarlet is just a horrible, horrible character. <laughs> but it is a beautifully written book. I know that maybe some people are like, well, it's not politically correct. But I also realize that no classic is ever going to be politically correct because what is politically correct is constantly changing. So you're never going to have like, even if you wrote something completely politically correct in the modern day, in 20 years, people may look back and say, that's totally not politically correct. So yes, do I d agree with everything contained in this book? No, but is it a brilliantly written book and such a beautiful sweeping documentation of the Civil War and how a horrible thing life was for some people and how cruel people could be during that era? Yes. So I highly recommend it. Oh no, oh no. The next book I have is also by Ernest Hemingway. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> I tried to make it so that authors didn't have double things. Be not, I'm still going to do it. For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway. It tells the story of a young man's experience in war in Spain. And not only does it pick, depict Spain in such an interesting way, but also all the characters are really fascinating individuals. <clears throat> all right, the next one is Oscar Wilde. Not the importance of being Ernest, actually. I think my favorite play by Oscar Wilde um, even above the picture of Dorian Gray, which I also love, but I think my favorite is An Ideal Husband. I just love it. It is comical. It is hilarious. It is filled with misadventures and misunderstandings, and I just love that play so much. So I think I'm going to go with that, even though I think objectively Oscar Wilde does have better plays, but I just love An Ideal Husband so much. All right, the next book is Les Mis by Victor Hugo. Look at my beautiful copy with tiny little writing. <laughs> I read all of this. Don't know what I was thinking. Um, Les Mis tells the story of France over about a 20 year period. Um, it mostly follows this convict who uh, stole bread and served his time, but then he left and now he's being hunted down. And yes, yeah, so it is a beautiful, sweeping epic. There's so many amazing characters. Um, a lot of people know this book by the musical, but the book is 10 times better than the musical. And if you can, please read the unabridged version of it because Victor Hugo has a lot of asides where he leaves the narrative just for a chapter or two, just to um, talk about his ideals and understandings of the world in uh, context of what's actually going on in the narrative at the time. It's brilliant. Next book is Treasure Island by R.L. Stevenson. Uh, this is such a fun adventure about pirates. Such a great book. Next one is Lilies of the Field by William E. Barnett. This talks about this African-American GI that just came back from the war who helps these cute little nuns build a church and it's just such a beautiful short story. Next one is Cianaro de Bergerac by Edmund Rostin. Of course, everyone knows this story. In fact, they made a new movie of it, um, which I have not seen. I need to see. I've heard great things about it. Um, but this book, I always used to hate this book when I was a teenager, but I read it and reread it in the last couple years, and I absolutely loved it. Um, it, because it follows this man who is considered ugly, and but he has this talent for the poetic. So 
he writes these letters for this good-looking man who wants to court this beautiful woman, but uh, Cianaro is in love with her. And so there's this idea of she's falling in love with the words of Cianaro, even though she thinks it's his friend. So it's, it's an interesting novel, but beautifully written. Next one is A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. I've heard so many good things about her books, and I need to read more of her books, but this is the only one of hers that I actually read. And I love it. The way she creates fantasy is so much different than a lot of the more classic fantasies. Next one is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. I love this in high school. I got obsessed with the sea in high school and like traveling because of it around the world in 80 days. Basically Jules Verne, bleh. Basically Jules Verne was my hero in high school um, and he is a great writer. He was a French writer. This particular one is about these three men that are picked up by this mysterious submarine in the 1800s and go on adventures underneath the sea. Um, but all of Jules Verne books are tend to be uh, all about science and things like that that were being discovered at the time. And some of his suppositions of like where science would go was totally wrong, but some was like spawn on is really interesting. Next book is To Kill Mockingbird by Harper Lee. This book tells the story of this little girl and her experience in the 1930s. Her father, this lawyer, who is defending this young black man who is accused of assaulting this young white woman. And it's a great book, but it's hard to read at points. All right. <clears throat> and this list wouldn't be complete without One Piece. Yes, it is a massive book, 1200 pages. I just read this a few months ago and I'm so proud of reading it. And it tells of the epic saga of the 1812 Napoleon's campaign into Russia following these fictional characters that come from mostly the height of Russian society. It's a brilliantly written book, even if Tolstoy loves to just yab on about random things. Next one is Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim by Robert. Robert C. O'Brien. I just read this one recently again, and it is a brilliant, brilliant book that follows this mouse who wants to save her son uh, because the fields that she lives in are going to be plowed and her son can't move because he's sick. So she goes to seek these, the help of these mysterious rats of Nim. So it's, it's a brilliant book. I highly recommend it. There's also a movie in the 80s that's great. Dream of the Red Chamber by Cao Shu Chin. <laughs> I'm forgetting all my Chinese, I swear. Um, this is a book that follows this family and this young man's life in Qing Dynasty China. This book was originally written in about the 1600s. It's a brilliant book. I highly recommend it. It There's so many Chinese classics out there that are great, and most people in the West don't read a lot of Chinese classics. All right, the next one is The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne, and I read this in high school. And it is an interesting book that talks about this woman who gets pregnant out of wedlock and she lives in this very strict Puritan culture in the 1600s. Because of that, she's ostracized and forced to wear a red A for a daughteress around everywhere. And she has this little daughter who's so sweet. And it's interesting how Hester is able to overcome adversity despite being ostracized from her community. It's an interesting book and it discusses important themes, even though it is hard to read at some points. Next one is Peter and Wendy by R.M. Barry. I actually got this copy. This is a restored text that hadn't been published. Interesting to uh, learn about the process of like how the editions have been changed from the original and things like that versus like the play and the book and so much. But Peter and Wendy, who doesn't want... Who doesn't love the story of the boy who refuses to grow up and Neverland and all these fairy tale stuff, but also deeper themes. Next one is Captain Blood by Raphael Sabatini. One of the best pirate novels of all written of all time. Um, some may disagree with me, but I love it. It follows Captain Blood, who becomes a pirate kind of. Next one is A Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Can you tell I like dystopian? Because yeah, you'll see a lot of the great dystopians on this list because whether it's 1984 or Brave New World, um, they are brilliant and they make you think. Next one is The Epic of Gilgamesh. This is considered to be the first written story, I believe. This is part of the Sumerian society back, I'm gonna say around 2000 BC, uh, this was written. This was found on Curiform, Curiform? 
cuneiform, <laughs> uniform, I can't pronounce anything, tablets, basically. And uh, I found this interesting to read. I highly recommend it, especially since it, it is so short, you know, it won't take you that long to read. It's online accessible. My copy is only about 100 pages. So it is a little bit like a precursor to the Iliad. So highly interesting book, especially knowing it was the first writing that has survived to this day. Next one is The Song of Roland, which is translated by the lovely Dorothy L. Sayers. This is a brilliant uh, epic poem again. Uh, it was originally written, I believe, in the 1100s or 1200s French. And there's a lot of different like copies that exist to the the modern day that are quite different. Um, but this one is probably the most famous, the one translated by Dorothy L. Sayers. Next one is The Scarlet Pimpernel by the Baroness Ortsy. So uh, this book is about the French, the, the man of disguise in the French Revolution that saved so many lives in disguise. <laughs> It's a great book. It's like adventure and political intrigue. It also talks about a very brutal era in French history during the French Revolution. It's a great book. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. And Silas Mourner by George Eliot. This is the only book I've read by George Eliot yet, but it is one of her shortest, which is why I read it, because a lot of her books are very long. And this tells of this grumpy old man who takes in this young girl and she changes his life, basically. It's a beautiful and sweet story. We're currently at the halfway point. And here's what I'm thinking. I'm, I've already been doing this video for so long. I feel like to do this video, it would have to be like an hour long in order to talk as much as I am. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this video in half. So I'm going to do, um, put up this video, this today, obviously. And then next week, I'm going to come out with the second list of 50 books. Ha uh, have you read any of these books? Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you like this video, like, subscribe. I post every Saturday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!